Hi everyone, this is Jenny Lyles. Welcome to Out of My Mind. Today we're going to take a journey into DBT's chain analysis, behavioral chain analysis. Now I'm going to show you this real quick and this is why I'm going to break this down for you. This is the six pages of how to do a behavioral chain analysis that you will find in the DBT handbook for people who are in DBT classes. And it has a lot of really good information, but I have had many people tell me over the years that they find it confusing and they struggle with it and they would like me to help them break it down a little further. So that's what I'm going to do today. And I'm not going to do any pretty drawings. I am actually going to do a behavioral chain analysis while I talk to you about it. Now there are 11 elements of a behavioral chain analysis. Um, each one, and I need you to hear this clearly, should be described in excruciating, agonizing detail. As much detail as you can put into it. So of course, because we're time limited, mine is not going to be excruciating detail, but when you do it, you're going to be doing this in your own time when you're not in the middle of a crisis, so you will have time to do this. The first thing you need to know before we go through the 11 steps is that a ch behavioral chain analysis is not done in the moment when you're stressed, when things are blowing up all around you. It is kind of the post-mortem of like a football game or what went wrong. So you're kind of looking at what happened and seeing where you can make things better. So the first thing we're going to describe, and I'm always going to tilt my paper when I write because that's the way I am, is one, the problem behavior. I've got plenty of paper here. Now what I've decided to do is I'm going to talk about the same incident I shared with you guys a couple of weeks ago where I lost my temper and yelled at my husband and then my son because my computer had not arrived and I was afraid it wasn't going to because of something my husband said. And if you remember, there were a lot of factors to that and we'll be going over that. But this has lost my temper right before computer arrived. Okay, so this is the problem behavior. And when I say I lost my temper, here's the kind of excruciating detail we want to talk about. I yelled. I cussed. I stomped around the house. I may have, and I don't remember, I may have called people's names. I was generally not very pleasant at all, okay? So the problem behavior was the yelling, the cussing, the stomping around. You know, those are things that don't help the situation no matter what happened. So those are the things that are going to be my target behaviors. How do I change those target problem behaviors? Let me go back over here. So the beginning of the chain analysis, and if you're, you're working on that, you're going to be doing your problem behavior is going to be right here in that very first section. And of course, you're going to put your name up here. This is my name. And today is Mother's Day. So this is May, what is it, 12th? I've lost Trump. And the date of the problem behavior was about two weeks ago. I don't remember the date. And that's fine, you don't have to remember the date. But I would be, if I was doing this, I would probably be spending, and I'm going to pretend I'm writing here, I would probably be spending a good five or 10 minutes writing in as much detail as I can remember exactly what I did that I'm trying to change. Now, one thing to keep in mind is when you're looking at problem behaviors with a chain analysis, unless you're helping somebody with theirs and you've gotten pretty good at it, you are looking at your own behavior, not somebody else's. And the reason we're doing my behavior here is because I am uh, bound by HIPAA not to talk about my clients and I'm bound by love not to talk about my family. So I'm going to embarrass myself instead. The next thing we look at 
is the prompting event. This is the thing that set you off. And this is kind of interesting because you see this chain analysis. The prompting event does not have to come first. It can be anywhere in this chain. Here's the problem behavior. And the prompting event was over here. There's a bunch of links and then there's the problem behavior. And back here is vulnerability, which we'll get to in a moment. The prompting behavior that particular day um, and I apologize for the background noise. My next door neighbor's dog is going a little crazy. Uh, the prompting event that particular day was my husband said he had signed for the computer and it was dog food. Computer, but he had signed for dog food. And I thought that he had accidentally signed something that was actually for the computer and didn't get the computer, which I, by the way, would not have been able to replace. So this was the prompting event. I had a lot of stuff going on, and if I was doing this for myself, I might actually set up a set of links. I'm going to do it with the pretty size of this. So I might set up some links and kind of write them out for myself and have a little fun with it. Kind of like this, right? And I would just kind of put stuff where I think they belong as I'm looking at it. And I might even go all the way around the page because that's kind of fun, right? And the first thing before the prompting event, and we talk about this third because sometimes we can't see this until we've seen these two. So the prompting event is something in the environment. This could be um, something that you did, something somebody else did, something that just happened, like a thunderstorm, things like that. The prompting event is something that, that made your behavior switch over from being appropriate to inappropriate. Okay, now the next thing we're going to talk about is vulnerabilities. Uh, abilities, there we are. Vulnerabilities are anything in me, in my environment, including other people, that led to me not being able to keep myself from doing this problem behavior. Now remember the prompting event. Again, we're going to probably write this in some pretty gory detail right here on this page. We're going to pretend we're writing here. Pretend, pretend, pretend. And your prompting event, and I would suggest using a smaller pen if you're doing this for real. Some of the vulnerabilities I had that day, now I had a doozy load of vulnerabilities, which is probably why I lost it so completely. Okay, I had a doctor's appointment with a new doctor. Okay, I hadn't slept well. Okay, I had fasted for the blood tests in the morning, so I hadn't eaten. I um, was excited about my computer. And then I was disappointed when I realized it was just dog food. Okay, so these are, these are actually not all the vulnerabilities. The vulnerabilities, um, you might, you notice how I, I wrote sentence-like scribbles here? For vulnerabilities, you might do something like this. And you might have a bunch of different vulnerabilities. Some of them will be a little longer. And you'll write them all in there, right? Vulnerability, vulnerability. And for the sake of time, I only included five, but I had a really rotten morning that morning. And there were a lot more vulnerabilities than that. The fourth thing you're going to look at are the links in the chain. And I've turned this over and this is the second page and this has all the links and I might go back and use my fancy one that I did here because um, all I did to find this, and this is actually the one that comes from the DBT handbook, but I just Googled chain analysis 
or behavioral chain analysis and it came right up as a PDF and I printed it out. But if you don't have a printer or you don't want to go through the trouble, you can do what I've done here. And when I get the article up, this very short description will be part of it and I might even make it a PDF so that you can look at it separately. Um, the links in the chain in the chain are all the thoughts, feelings, body sensations, events, beliefs, expectations, emotions, and the things you and others did. Now some of those, if you'll notice, you're going to be able to go up to your vulnerabilities and see some of the links in the chain. Some of the links in the chain are going to be the same as your vulnerabilities. Um, I had had a doctor appointment and was feeling pretty miserable. Um, I came home with a sore arm. I'm not even going to write all this down. I'm just going to pretend I am because it really is going to take too long. Came home with a sore arm. My husband was so proud of himself and told me he'd signed for my package. And I thought that he had cost me my computer because, of course, if you sign for something and you don't get it, there's no way to prove that you didn't get it. So I was extremely scared. Um, some of the thoughts I was feeling is I was resentful. And at the same time, I felt sorry for my husband because he didn't understand why he was upsetting me. I was feeling uh, angry and I was feeling like I had lost something very important to me. Um, my body sensation, my heart dropped into my gut because I was trying to figure out how on earth I could buy that computer twice because it was a very expensive computer. Um, events, again, the doctor's appointment, getting shots, two of them, um, getting fl um, blood work done, um, making a whole bunch of appointments that I'm not looking forward to. Who likes colonoscopies? Not me. Um, beliefs. I believed that I wasn't going to get my computer. Expectations. When I walked up to the house and saw that there was a package, I'm like, oh, yay, my computer was got, got here. Then I saw that there was a picture of a dog on the package and realized my monthly dog food had arrived. My emotions were all over the place. I felt about a dozen of them. And again, if I was doing this, I would easily fill out this whole page. Pum, pum, pum. And I would write them down. And it's okay to do this and kind of do this. If you think that maybe you got your link wrong, that is fine. Scribble, scribble, scribble. That's the whole point. So you really want that this is a worksheet, not a final thing. You are not turning this in for a grade. You are doing this to make your life better. Um, so the next thing after the links in the chain is the consequences, consequences of the behavior. You know, if I had thrown a fit like that as a little child, I would have been grounded to my room for a week. I can guarantee you because it was a meltdown, folks. And I uh, did not have parents that understood that meltdowns are part of either head injuries or autism. In my case, it is head injuries. Um, and so my parents would not have been accommodating for that. But some of the consequences were that I upset my husband. I upset my son, who by the way is very gentle and very shy and does not like loudness at all and so that's like a biggie. Um, and I was very embarrassed and I didn't like myself. So these are really for... Um, now if I didn't have good solid relationships with my family, this could have been a whole lot work worse like those were the immediate consequences now what the next question and some of the things that you're going to be looking at here 
are other people's reactions. You're going to be looking at your feelings, the effects on you and your environment. Now, if I'd had a meltdown like that at a job, I might have lost my job. If I'd had a meltdown like that with somebody who was thinking of um, seeing me for therapy, they might think again. Um, delayed consequences. Um, this actually wasn't a huge thing. My biggest delayed consequence is that I felt guilty. Um, and I did. And I felt guilty for a while. I still feel a little guilty or wouldn't be bringing it up two weeks later. So this is where you fill out your consequences right through here. And again, you're going to do, um, this is major consequences in the environment. I had my husband and son very upset. And probably my dog and cat, by the way, too, and they matter, too. Um, and consequences to myself. And, of course, I was embarrassed and guilty. And we can just pretend I wrote that. Next thing I'm going to do, and this is where we start. Remember we said this is kind of like a post-mortem of a football game? Now, you know, if the coach sits you down... Um, the next thing they're going to talk about is what went wrong and then how are we going to fix it next time? So this is what we're doing now. Solutions. I could have done. And this is kind of really, again, remember, everything is excruciating detail. So I filled out all these. I've got all kinds of these, right? And I was smart. I left myself all kinds of room in the middle. So this is what I'm going to do with each of these. On each of these, I'm going to kind of write, and you don't have to do it for all of them, but for the ones that it's obvious when you're looking at all these links in the chain, what could I have done differently? So when I'm going back to what happened that day, when my husband said, I signed for it, I should have taken a deep breath to calm myself. So deep breath, deep calming breath. And see, I know how to do this. Um, but I wasn't able to use my coping skills that time. I should have taken a deep, calming breath and asked him to clarify. And the reason why is because he didn't actually do anything wrong. He had uh, gone and chased Lady Day, our dog, because she had gone running off the, off the porch after a squirrel. And he had been coming back when the guy with the package had come and he had offered to sign for the packages he saw, which weren't the computer. And if I had gotten the whole story, I would have understood that it wasn't the computer. I was also in a hurry to get to work. Um, so I should have maybe slowed down and checked Amazon. This is the funny part I tried, um, but my phone was dead. And it didn't even occur to me to ask my son to check Amazon because my son shares my Amazon account with me. Um, my husband doesn't do computers, but my son does. And my son had actually checked, but by the time he came back out to tell me everything was okay, I was already gone. Um, another solution I could have done and didn't was I could have eaten something because I was really hungry. And the funny thing is, is again, this is a case of trying to do my coping skills and failing because I ran into the kitchen in the middle of my meltdown, knowing that part of it was hunger and put an English muffin in the toaster and found it in the toaster three days later. So apparently my attempts at using coping skills failed miserably that day. So these are some of the solutions and I could go back and look at all the different vulnerabilities. Like, um, hadn't slept well. Now, about midnight, I realized I wasn't sleeping. What if I had taken um, another sleeping aid? Um, and I would have taken something mild at that point, like melatonin, because what I already take is a little too strong to take anything else. Um, I probably should have calmed down when I first came in and gotten all the information before I melted down. And that's kind of a biggie. So prevention strategies. This is the next one because what we're going to try to do, um, again, we're doing a postmortem just like a full. How are we going to keep this from having, happening next time, right? So how do we reduce the vulnerabilities? Well, you know, I happened to be at a doctor appointment. So two of the things that I did were um, get a new antidepressant 
which by the way is working wonderfully. And I got put on Vistaril, which is a mild anti-anxiety, which also helps me sleep. So that solved three separate issues in two pills, um, which is pretty good. Um, another thing I did was, okay, I am not going to, I'm, I'm going to try to be more mindful, work on mindfulness. And I am trying to do my mindfulness more frequently. Um, anybody who's worked with me in DBT knows that mindfulness is my particular um, difficulty in, in DBT. I struggle with it myself, which means I struggle with teaching it. Um, so the, it goes back to the prompting event right here, and I'm not sure why. And then we've got the instructions right here. Okay. So I'm going to, so we, we're going to keep going on the steps, which I took, by the way, straight from the last three pages of this and shortened them up quite a bit for you. Um, but prevention strategies are going to be things that, hey, if I do this, I'm less likely to have this problem in the future. I'm going to um, make sure that when I go to the doctors, I'm going to take a charger with me so my phone doesn't die so that I'm not panicking to check information when I get home. I'm not going to schedule any doctor's appointments close enough to work that I'm hurrying, that kind of thing. So then we need a plan to solve the prompting event. Now the prompting event was something that in this case actually can't be solved um, because it wasn't mine to solve. My It was my husband, um, husband signed for something and struggled to communicate with me what he did um, and struggled to me. And the thing with the struggling to communicate is that both my husband and I have had head injuries in our lives. My husband's is much more recent than mine. And sometimes he forgets things and he forgets how to put words together in a way that I can understand what he's trying to say. Um, not that he's not smart, but sometimes when, especially when he's upset or excited, words kind of go flying away from him. So in terms of um, solve the prompting event is I need to be more mindful of his struggles here and slow down and stop stressing him out because when I stress him out, I can't get the information I need to lower my anxiety. Okay. So um, that's part of the plan is to do that. Another part of the plan is to keep working on my sleep, you know, that kind of thing. Um, again, all of these excruciating detail, you're probably going to go, oh my God, is this going to take hours? Maybe guys, it could. All right. Now the next part, this goes back to what I taught you before, own, apologize, repair. And I will put a link on the article to this when I do this. So you will be able to go back to that article on oomm.live and get more detail on how to repair when you have done something. I did this and I actually did a lot of this because I've been doing chain analysis chain analysis for over a decade. So um, I'm pretty good at them at this point. So most of this I was doing in my head within a couple of hours after I was done. But uh, the biggies were to apologize to my husband, which I did the minute I got to work after I checked to make sure my computer was still on the way because, you know, we have priorities. And the second thing I did, because my son um, has has a, a really special need for me to not yell at him, and there's a lot of good reasons for that, um, I went and got him a treat um, and waited until he got home that night from work and handed him that treat. Now, my, my son is an adult. He's almost 30 years old, and he lives with us to help us out, and we're really grateful that he does. So... This is, um, I, I really abused his, his trust. So I, uh, I got my son a little gift and I talked to him a little bit about our anxiety patterns, how I am a fighter when, um, when I'm angry and he is a freezer or a fawner. And uh, this, again, you can find at oomm.live, the four Fs of fear, and that'll give you some ideas of how to deal with it when you and another person have different 
fear ways of dealing with things. So you're going to figure out who or what you harm. Now, sometimes you're going to actually do property damage. I have been angry enough to break things before. I'm sure most of you have as well. And you're going to have to buy new things or replace them in some way. Um, you're going to describe, again, repairs. We talked about repairs. Repairs are those quick things we do to try to repair the relationship, repair the situation. Corrections, and these are deeper than repair. We're going back and making sure that we are changing the pattern. Corrections change the pattern. And you're going to like this last one even better. Over corrections. And over corrections, what they do is you look and say, how can I make this even better? So my overcorrection for this might be something to the effect of I am going to stop myself every time I want to yell and listen to how I sound. Because I don't like the way I sound when I yell. I do it way too much. It's a very, very bad habit and I want to fix. So I'm going to work on the yelling specifically to overcorrect to change the pattern in such a way that my household not only isn't damaged by what I did, but it actually ends up more peaceful and I end up happier and my relationships end up happier. Okay? And happy years is what I wrote because you know what? Anyway, so the last of the elements in a behavioral chain analysis is a reflection. And this what you would do on this sheet here is you would turn to a spot that's nice and big like this or you would get a journal out and you would write and write and write and write all the feelings, the thoughts, the actions, the irritability about writing this stupid behavioral chain analysis. How did the chain analysis go? Did I actually learn anything or was it a whole bunch of BS? You, know, you just keep writing and writing and writing. This is basically um, a journal entry. And you are going to write about thoughts and feelings, comments on the analysis. And if it gets too deep and you get too up in your feels, change what you're writing until you're talking about something a little less serious for yourself. Now, like I said, if you want to do this at home, you can either just Google um, behavioral chain analysis and you will probably find this sheet pretty quickly. I will also provide a link at it when I do the article for this on oomm.live. And, um, or else you can do it the way I did it. And I will, when, oops, looks like I have something on there. It's, it's a bit of pencil sharpener stuff. Um, oomm.live will also have this nice, one page uh, summary, and of course, I probably will leave my meltdown out of this because that's not, but this is what, these are what my notes were this much for you to see. And you are going to be able to get a whole lot done when you do that. I hope that this helps because it is a technique that you can't use in the heat of things. You can't use it when you're still upset enough that you have your heart racing, that you have a headache, that you have your stomach hurting. You use it when the situation has died down enough that you get a little bit of peace on your own. In any case, this is it for this particular episode. I will talk to you soon. Don't forget to go to oomm.live and see all the rest of my articles, or you can sign up to become a patron at patreon.com backslash j-l-i-l-e-s and you will generally see things about a week before the entire public will. Um, I also have a Facebook group, Out of My Mind Facebook group, that you're welcome to join. The link is again at the website. Thank you very much and we'll talk to you soon.